Welcome to one of the busiest stands here at the photography show and the video show. It's the Canon stand and I'm joined by Media. Media, thank you so much for joining us. You have assembled a gaggle of cameras on the desk in front of us. Uh, some very new, very exciting bits of kit here. Uh, which of these have been particularly popular with visitors to your stand here so far? So we have, uh, good afternoon, well, good morning, actually, everyone. Um, so we have the R7 and the R10, mm -hmm. um, the latest addition to our um, EOS R system cameras. And they are the first two APS-C um, cameras. Obviously, the, the um, 7D, um, for example, 7D1 and 2 have been very popular with sports and wildlife photographers. And the R7 is going to be the, the hero R7 um, replacement. But the, the great thing about these two cameras is they're fairly small, light, affordable compared to the uh, our full frame EOS um, cameras, um, but they do take loads of professional um, features from the even the R3, for example, the autofocus yeah. is from the R3, which is amazing. So, uh, it's, it's my first time seeing these in the well in the flesh in in the metal, and and the first thing that strikes me though is the size. They are um. I don't very often use the word cute when it comes to cameras. Is. <laughs> this is, I mean, um, look, look at the size of my hands and, and how it fits in. And it's this APS-C size that actually, I, that's how I started off with, with my videography work like more than 10 years ago on the 7D, that as you mentioned. But actually just to see, you know, this system, it's, it's beautiful. The, the R10, the, um, which is the one you have in your hand at the moment, is the easiest way for those familiar with the 250D because we always had the 100D and then the 200 and 250D. They usually, they used to be our smallest dishless lot. This is even lighter, just to give you an idea in terms of weight. It is lighter than the 250D, um, smaller as well. It feels lighter than even the M50, which is yeah. the, which is meant to be our smallest um, EOS M, um, camera. But in terms of functionality features, you've still got the articulated screen there. Yeah, you, you know, you've got plenty of dials, plenty of controls on the back still similar to the other cameras in our EOS R system. Um, they are very customizable. You do have, as I said, with the, um, the R7, slightly bigger and heavier, so you do get the better weather ceiling, again, for wildlife, sports wildlife in particular. Um, so, so yeah, that, that, that was my question, the differentiation between the R10 and the R7. Who's going to pick one over the other, would you say? Um, so for those into sports and wildlife, they will go for the R7, yeah. purely because it's slightly faster. You're looking at up to 30 frames per second with the electronic shutter, yeah. uh, 15 frames per second with the mechanical shutter. Yeah. Um, but it's that weather ceiling as well. If you're out there shooting um, and it might, might rain, uh, you never know. Um, so the R7 will be the better option to go for. For those that probably for travel, create content, other content creators that the, they prefer a smaller camera yeah. and the weather ceiling doesn't actually bother them much than the R10, which is, is still very, very close yeah. um, in terms of spec. So it's like 23 frames per second. I mean, 23 and 30, they're still very fast cameras. Um, one of the key differences for those that shoot quite a lot is the in-body IS. You do have it on the R7, you don't have it on the R10. Okay. So that's one of the differences. Um, with the R7 as well, you do get um, the LP6NH, so the, the powerful battery that we use on the R5, the R6. Yeah. Um, so it does allow you to shoot a little bit longer. And then you get the two memory card slots, so two SD card slots on the R7, a single one on the R10. Okay. Um, again, they both have great video capabilities as well. So they both benefit from the multifunction shoe, which we first introduced on the R3 meaning you can use the third-party XLR adapter, the Tascam, um, for those doing video. Both can deliver 4K um, up to 60. You've got full HD up to 120. Um, with the R7, for those that wants to do a little bit more with their video, you have the option to do C-Log3 as well, if you want to shoot flat and great. And of course, having the in-camera stabilization as well, that'd be very, very handy for videographers, particularly holding a, a smaller camera, yeah. you know, handheld, just having that extra little bit of stability for, from, for, from within, just make for those smoother images, I think. On the subject of video, the other camera that you have here is the, which is, which is your favorite, I know, I know you're, very much a, a, a video fan, is the R5C. Now you've complemented the R5C here with this uh, incredible bit of a cine glass. Tell us a bit more about what we're looking at. 
Um, so the R5C is, is what I, you call a true hybrid. Um, for those that do stills and video, uh, so primarily videographers, but they want to have full flexibility and full control from their cameras if they want to um, do stills. Currently, um, our cinema cameras, like with the C70, C300 or C500, if you, if you want to take any stills from those cameras, the only way around it is to do a frame grab. So you don't have much control. Whereas with the R5C, it does give you the R5 photo capabilities. Even the menu is pretty much the R5. And then the minute you decide to do video, you switch it to the to the video. And then you get the cinema iOS menu um, with all its glory and all the options and controls that you want. <laughs> so, so that that is my question in terms of, you know, you talk about this being a hybrid camera. If you do have an R5, for example, or you're going out with an R10 or an R7, as we've just spoken about, they do do video. Yeah. So what makes this an, uh, a C, what makes this more of a videographer's camera above and beyond the capabilities of the native R5, R7, R10? Um, so the, I mean, the fan is one thing. So because it's a cinema camera, um, as you can see, um, that means you can record for longer without having to worry about the camera overheating for hours. I mean, the the latest range from the R3, um, the R7, and the R10, you can still record for longer. But with this, with the R5C, and the same as other cinema cameras, you don't have to worry about the overheating at all, even if you're recording a whole day. Yeah. Um, the other thing is because it's a cinema menu, so you do have more professional options, um, XF AVC, because on... Uh, so the codex that you're able to record in, yeah. More professional codex um, on there. Um, you do have the, the cinema or light option, and you do have different flavors. Again, because this is a cinema camera, you do have the option to shoot full frame, Super 35 or Super 16. Okay. Um, so full frame, you can do up to 8K raw, Super 35, you can do 5.9K raw, yeah. and then uh, Super 16, you have the option to do 2.9K raw. So you do have more on the options, and then more in terms of the custom picture menu, yeah. uh, where you've got um, C-Log 3, for example, you've got YDR, you have um, HDR options with HLG and PQ, loads of custom picture modes on there, and loads of presets. So, so there's a lot more that you can do, if you need that flexibility and that control. If you don't, and you're just looking at, um, at like MP4 deliverables with basic controls, then you can get that from the, the R5. I mean, there are loads of people out there using the R5 for video. So would I be incorrect to say, and I, I, I don't work for Canon, I'm just uh, interpreting what, what it is that I'm picking up from what you're saying. If you are video, video first, video first. then this is, going to give you the flexibility that you need as a professional videographer to capture more or less whatever your client requirements or your own requirements might be and you can get stills out of it bonus if you are image if you are stills first but need to shoot some video as well and, and shoot good quality video then this camera is well, one of one of these non-c versions is probably closer to where you should be looking first of all yeah um yeah you, you're correct so as i said video first R5C, um, photo first with video capabilities, then you do have even the, the R10, the R7, and the rest of our EOS R cameras. Excellent stuff. Media, thank you so much for chatting us through the range here. Exciting stuff, and you know, I, I'm as excited as anyone to get hands on with this very nifty, cute little camera that is still so, so powerful. Um, very quickly before we go, what else can visitors to the photography show and the video show expect from coming to see your stand? Because we're just at one little corner here. It's huge and it's very, very busy. Why, why else are people here? There is, a, there is a lot more. I mean, on the from the product side, we do have the RF 1200 mil and the RF 800 mil that we introduced in February as well. Yep. Uh, the lens bar is back, obviously, after last year. So we have got lots of lenses over our shoulder. Lenses, but we also have the lens bar where people can actually try a combination of like the R3, the R5 um, with the long lenses. But we also have educational talks so on our bite-sized stage and inspirational talks on the spotlight stage as well. Um, we have a live shooting area, so for those who are into weddings or they're interested in to, to get into weddings and want to know a little bit more. So we have the Canon Ambassador Sanjay. Uh, we've got three sessions running um, per day. 
and then depending on their level and how much or what it is that they're after in terms of what they want to learn or pick up, um, they can select the perfect session for them. And just over our shoulder there is friend of the show, yes. Dave Parry, who is uh, doing innovation stuff now with some very exciting innovation type cameras. We'll be pay in, in fact, uh, Dave's not busy. Come out here very, very quickly. <laughs> Dave, I couldn't get by. I couldn't get by a visit to the Canon stand without coming to say hello because we've been doing this for years now. Uh, very quickly, these these don't fit into the uh, into the RF system, do they? What are we what are we looking at here, Dave? So this is something very different from us. I think you might have seen it last year, or the year before. We had it as kind of here as an idea rather than an actual finished product. But here it is. This is a little photographer. The little photographer. The little photographer. Wow. So okay. The, um, the PowerShot PX. Yep. And what it is, it's basically an entire camera and photographer inside this little device. So there's a battery inside it, the memory card, and everything in it. And the idea is. If you're that person, you're always that person behind the camera taking pictures at your family events, whether it's a big picnic or party or something. You can take this with you, you can put it down, turn it on, it'll look around, it'll look for people's faces, and it'll take photos and videos of people. So it helps you get those images, get those candid, friendly images. So this is what we've got here. So it's tracking around, it looks like a kind of mini PTZ, yeah, really, doesn't it? There, oh, here we go. It. See, it's looking around, it's probably gonna, it'll move around in a minute. So look, look for faces, it'll take photographs of them, it'll take videos of people, and then save all the images. Now what's interesting, what we've done now, is you can actually link up multiple versions of this. We're saying 10, but potentially more. You could link loads of them together and get all the images sent to a PC. So you can imagine if you're at an event, like a wedding or a conference or something, you can set these all up on the table, have all these pictures being taken and sent to a PC to be sorted through. And we have software that'll sort through and pick out all the best images. And that was my follow-up question because this sounds like a workflow nightmare in terms of having up to 10 cameras all taking images. How do you pick what's the best? It sounds like there's some AI or machine learning in there that's needed to try and work out what the selects are from these hundreds potentially of images. Yeah, it can be. These cameras will run for about three and a half hours on the internal battery, so you could have a lot of images to sort. But like I say, we've got this software, which is a sorting software, which will go through, pick out the best images, and then you can show them to your client or whatever and let them choose which photos they want. So yeah, try and make things as easy as we can. Dave, as always, good to see you. Thank you very much indeed. And Media has disappeared. Media, thank you. Here we go. Media, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And please come and see us. We've got millions of products <laughs> that you can have a look at and or you can enjoy our educational talks. There we go. I think I've just had an educational talk here from Media and Dave. Make you over to the Canada stand. See you there.